This program was recorded on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. As Canadians, we're lucky to be surrounded by so many beautiful bodies of water, which means we have an abundance of fresh seafood. Seafood is often a miss, but I am going to show you how to turn it into a hit. Wild-caught salmon has so many amazing health benefits. I'm going to be talking about those and also showing you my favorite way to make it. I'm going to be doing a crusted salmon, a lovely salad to go along with it, an herbed yogurt sauce, and then I'm going to turn the leftovers into something for later in the week, if I have any. Wild-caught salmon is something that a lot of people see at the grocery store, but they don't know the difference between wild and farmed. Two-thirds of the salmon that we eat in North America is farmed, actually, which you might notice that this salmon here that I have in front of me is actually a little bit less pink and a little bit smaller than you might be used to. And that's actually because wild-caught salmon grows in the ocean, has a different diet from salmon to salmon, and farm salmon is actually bred to be big for the look and to be more pink by feeding it feed that has actual pink coloring in it. There is actually also a difference in the nutrition and we'll talk about that later but first I want to get started on my first recipe. I've set my oven at 400 and I'm going to make the crust for this salmon. I never really liked salmon growing up or any fish for that matter and you know I really had to find a way to like it because when I went to school for nutrition, I learned all the health benefits and it was something that I really learned that needs to be included in your diet a few days a week. I'm going to cut these into three pieces. I think that's a nice size there. Some wild caught salmon that you buy will come already cut in pieces. Um, all wild salmon actually comes frozen because, um, especially when you live in the middle of a country like we do here in Ottawa, Canada, um, the wild fish is in the ocean and it's caught and then frozen fresh on site so it actually has high nutrient value. And then farm salmon is made um, sometimes indoors and so you can have farm fisheries in the middle of countries and that's why you get to see sometimes fresh beautiful salmon at your deli counter. So I'm going to set this over here while I get my crust ready. When I was trying to figure out a way to make salmon delectable for me, I was trying to think about my favorite flavors and what I loved. And growing up, I loved everything bagels. Who doesn't? Um, the onion and the garlic and the sesame, it's amazing. So I thought, why not crust salmon this way and see how it turns out? And it's actually amazing. So I have some white sesame seeds. I'm going to put a few spoonfuls in there. I've got black sesame seeds. Now, of course, if you don't have black or white, you can use either one. Or if you don't like sesame or you have an allergy to it, you can just leave it out altogether. I have poppy seeds. Doing about equal parts of everything. I have dried minced onion. And I also have some dried minced garlic. And who doesn't love extra garlic? So I think I'm going to add a little extra than equal parts of the garlic. And of course, certainly, we need some coarse salt. I'm going to mix this up. Oh, the smell of the garlic, the, uh, the aroma of the garlic is just delicious smelling. Okay, I'm going to grab my pan. I've got a baking pan that I've lined with parchment here. It's ready for me. And I'm going to crust this salmon so that we can get it into the oven. I've pre-defrosted this, but if, and I've also patted it dry with some paper towel because I wanted to show you. Um, but if you yourself has just defrosted it and it's still a little bit wet, you don't need to spray anything on it. But I want to make sure that my crust sticks and I can get as much flavor as possible. So I'm actually going to spray each one of my salmons with a little bit of olive oil. Oh wow. Look at that. It sticks so well and it's nice and crusted. It looks just like an everything bagel. 
So the benefits of wild salmon compared to farm um, are also for things like nutrient capacity and nutrient density. Um, wild caught salmon eats a wild diet. It eats what's natural to it and it has all of the nutrition that um, it's supposed to have. Farm salmon, unfortunately, is usually fed a feed. And so therefore, even though healthy and still full of omega fats and still full of nutrition, just not as much as the wild caught stuff. Also a really neat thing is contrary to popular belief, um, wild salmon is actually usually a little bit more affordable than um, farm salmon. Chefs and restaurants really love to use farm salmon because they have nice fat fillets and they are nice and pink and they usually come in really big pieces so you can cut them to the size that you want. Whereas wild salmon is much smaller, not as pink and not as pleasing to the eye and it comes frozen which means that Nine times out of ten when I'm at the store, the wild caught salmon from the freezer is definitely cheaper than the fresh stuff that I found in the deli counter. All right, I'm going to put this to the side and get rid of this guy and give my hands a quick wash. All right, now I've got these salmon and I've got my oven set at four have it. 400, excuse me. I'm going to get these popped in and they're going to bake in there for 16 to 18 minutes. I like my salmon really well cooked and flaky, so I'm probably going to stick to the 18 minute mark for myself. But if you like your salmon a little bit less cooked um, or a little bit softer on the middle, you can do more like 12 minutes. Oh wow, I can really smell the garlic and the onion. I'm going to get these in the oven and um, we'll see you after the break. I baked my crusted salmon for 18 minutes because I like my fish really well cooked and I actually took them out a little while ago and let them cool probably for a good half an hour so that they're not too hot to the touch. I'm going to set three pieces aside on this plate for when I am making my salad later. I'm just going to move this out of my way. And I'm going to turn these into salmon cakes for later on in the week. I'm going to freeze them so that they're ready for me when I have a busy day. I can grab them from the freezer and pan fry them or bake them in the oven. If you don't have that kind of time later in the week, you could bake them, but I'm just going to show you how to pack them and get them ready for in the oven. I crusted my salmon with the everything but the bagel seasoning, well my take on it, but of course you can really crust it with anything you like. You could use breadcrumbs, um, chopped nuts. Uh, other seeds like sunflower or sesame alone with cilantro to make it like an Asian flavor. There's really so many options in terms of crusting. Um, I like salmon because I mentioned that I don't really like seafood and salmon was the one that I kind of made myself like. But of course you could do the same concept with white fish, with shrimp, with you know little fillets. And you know what? You could actually even do the same thing with chicken if you really wanted to. So I'm going to put these in the bowl, I'm going to get rid of my pan here. And along with this, I'm going to put a couple other ingredients in here, but all of my seasoning is already on this fish. So in terms of the flavors in these fish cakes, the flavor is already there. The salt is already there and all of that stuff. So I'm just going to add some fresh shallot. I like that little crunch in the middle of my fish cake. You could also even use like a can of tuna if you wanted or a can of salmon if you don't have any cooked. That works well. And if you don't eat meat, you could even use something like a can of hearts of palm or even something like jackfruit that pulls apart really nicely and form them into patties. Omega-3 is something that a lot of people know what is in fish and that is one of the great benefits of eating seafood is the omegas and that's something that you can't really find in any other foods except for flax seeds but the amount of flax seeds that you would have to eat 
to equal the omega in a filet of salmon is just, you know, you'd probably have to eat like three or four cups of flax. So e eating a little piece of salmon definitely um, is better than getting all those flax seeds in your diet. Wow, I am about to start crying. Can you see my eyes watering? This shallot is super, super strong. So I've got my shallot all chopped and ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding breadcrumb and a binder. So I've chosen egg today as my binder. Um, it's something that will cook up and hold it together for me. But um, if you don't eat egg, you can use something like um, the liquid from a can of chickpeas. You could use um, some ground flaxseed mixed with water, or you could use um, some chia seeds. I'm crying, and uh, it is pretty intense. So I'm just gonna wipe my eyes. Some people wear goggles when they're chopping onions. I've tried that before, but it doesn't actually work for me. It doesn't really matter what I do. I'm always crying. So I have these breadcrumbs here. Instead of breadcrumbs, you could use almond meal. You could use chopped up nuts, like other uh, walnuts or pistachios. You could use more sesame seeds, or you could use something like ground flax or ground chia. You're looking for something to kind of soak up all the liquid. If you don't have anything like that, even just a spoonful of flour or a spoonful of cornstarch would work well as well. These are gluten-free breadcrumbs. I always have them on hand. But as mentioned, you could even crush up some corn flakes and use that as your breadcrumbs. I have these lovely pastured eggs here. I think I'm probably only going to need one. All right, so now is where you get your hands dirty. You can't be clean or, or polite about this. You really just have to stick your hands in there and break up the salmon into little pieces. If you were using canned fish or canned, um, something canned at this point, the fish would probably already be broken up for you. And you're looking for a consistency. So I'm looking to kind of squish the mixture together and when I release my hand, I can see that it holds really nicely. That's the texture that I'm looking for. If it was too wet, it would kind of slop. And if it wasn't wet enough, it would kind of crumble. So this is actually the perfect texture. I'm going to form these into six little fish cakes. And what's great about them is you can bake them from frozen, just like a fish cake that you would buy from the freezer section at your grocery store, but it's much healthier because you know what's in it. These can be frozen just like this, which I'm going to do today. It's going to show you that they're raw, and when you take them out of the freezer, you'll have to either bake them in the oven or you will pan sear them to cook them through because you want to make sure that egg is cooked. If you want to plan more for the end of the week and you know that you're going to be busy and you won't have time to do that, you could pan sear these now or bake them now and then let them cool completely and freeze them once they're already cooked. This little guy is not the same size as the rest, but that's okay. That's what real cooking is all about. I have this glass container here that I've got with parchment paper all set up. And the reason I have the parchment paper is because when I freeze it, it's not going to stick together. And then if I'm hungry and I get home from work and I only want one fish cake, I could open the container and just grab one because they won't be stuck together because there'll be paper in between them. So I'm gonna put two on the bottom of my container here and cover that. Same thing. Oh, that one fell apart. So it looks like I'm gonna have to reform it. That's the beauty of food is you can make a million mistakes and it doesn't really matter because you can fix it and no one would ever know. If you weren't here watching me, you wouldn't even know that I made that mistake and it wouldn't even matter. My favorite way to eat these fish cakes would definitely be pan seared because it'll get a really nice crust on the outside. I drizzle a little olive oil in the pan and just let them get nice and golden. But as you see, I've kind of packed them with the parchment paper all around them. And this way, they'll go in the freezer, they'll freeze completely, and then when I'm ready to make them, I can just take them out from here. 
after the break, I'm going to be showing you a, a lovely yogurt sauce that I'm going to make with fresh herbs to go along with this and the cooked salmon that's behind me, as well as a really nice mixed green salad to go along with that for my dinner later on tonight. I'm going to pop these in the freezer and we're going to see you after the break. My salmon cakes are in the freezer getting nice and frozen for later in the week and I thought that I would show you how I'm going to put dinner together for myself and my hubby for later on today. I have that salmon that I cooked here on this plate cooling um, and I'm going to make a lovely salad to go along with it and a nice yogurt sauce that would actually go really well with the fish cakes as well. So I've got a bowl and uh, not to make more dishes, I like to make my dressing right in the bottom of the salad bowl. This way I can put my greens on top and I don't have to make more of a mess. Now with this flavors going on in the salmon, so much onion, garlic and all that stuff, I want to make my salad nice and simple. So I'm going to start with a little bit of Dijon mustard. The reason I do that is because mustard is an emulsifier and funny enough, this isn't open yet. So I have to open it. Can I get it? There we go. So just a tiny little squirt of mustard in the bottom of my bowl. And to go along with that, I'm going to put some citrus and then drizzle in some olive oil. So I have these lovely lemons and limes here and I'm going to use lime to garnish my salmon later. So that's the citrus that I'm going to use in my dressing. So squeeze that in there. The citrus goes really nicely in contrast with the heavy garlic and onion. Okay, and of course, a little bit of salt because we want that. I'm going to use a whisk. Cheers. You can also use a, a fork or you could actually just put the greens on top and mix it all up. But the Dijon mustard helps hold the olive oil and the lime together. And then this way it's a nice conducive dressing and it doesn't split apart. I have some arugula here. It's a nice peppery green. It's one of my favorites. It's an Italian green, so I grew up eating it. Um, but of course, if you don't like that strong flavor, you can just use whatever greens that you yourself like. Spinach, romaine, butter lettuce, um, anything like that. Nothing better than your hands as the tool. So I've got this beautifully dressed arugula. I'm gonna set it here on my platter. I'm gonna give my hands a nice quick wash. So you see I have some blueberries here to go along with my salmon. I love to include berries with um, my main meals because they actually add a lot of antioxidants as well as color to the plate. The more color that your food has and the more variety of color that your food has, the more antioxidants, nutrition, and vitamins that are in them. Vitamins actually are colors, so the different colors that you see in the food and produce that you eat actually means that there's different vitamins within all of it. Isn't that a cool fact? All right, so you guys saw me squeeze the lemon there. I am going to grab a lime, I mean. I'm going to grab another lime, and I'm just going to talk to you about some limes. So you see this lime is nice and round. That's because I chose them on purpose this way. Because when I'm at the grocery store, I want to get the biggest bang for my buck. And those limes that you see that are kind of like the shape of an almond, that maybe are more like a lemon, they don't have that much juice in them. So when I'm shopping, I try to make sure that I can find limes that are nice and round, and then that way they actually are full of so much more juice. Another trick is to roll your citrus. So if you happen to get a lime or a lemon that feels kind of dry, you can give it a nice roll between your hands and the table and that'll really help. All right, so I've got this beautiful lime here and I was talking about blueberries. I love to put blueberries in salmon. The flavors actually go really nicely together and the color is just spectacular. So my favorite thing to eat on this salmon is a lovely, yummy, creamy dressing sauce or whatever you want to call it. You can make it with whatever creamy thing that you like, whether it's Greek yogurt 
or 10% cream or dairy-free yogurt that you get at the store, whichever you prefer. But my favorite creamy ingredient is my cultured coconut yogurt. This is one of my favorite and most proud products that I've ever made. It is a cultured coconut cream that I actually sell at two grocery stores here in Ottawa called New Grocery. You can pick that up there or you can contact me to get your own jar. What's so neat about it is that it's really only two ingredients. It's pure cultured coconut. So it's pure coconut with no other additive ingredients that I have fermented with a scoop from the last batch. So this is nice and creamy. Look how thick that is. It kind of compares to a Greek yogurt. So that's what I'm going to use here. I'm going to put a nice big scoop of that in here. It has a little bit of a sour smell. So you could also use something like clotted cream or even sour cream as a replacement for this. I'm going to put some olive oil in there just because we want some of that fruity flavor. A nice big pinch of salt. And behind me, I have some fresh herbs. There's nothing like fresh herbs. Basil is one of my favorite smells in the whole world. I used to always say growing up that um, if I could create my own perfume, it would be a perfume of fresh basil and tomato plants. You know that smell in, in the middle of the summer when you're standing in a garden and all you can really smell is the freshness of the basil. It's just, there's nothing like it. Mm. I'm gonna chop up my basil really, really rough. You can make it pretty by doing little ribbons, but I'm just gonna chop it up. I also have some fresh chives from my garden. You could use green onions, or you could use some dried chives if you wanted. Along with the chives, I've also got some fresh parsley. I'm gonna chop that up in here too. You could, of course, use whatever herbs you like, some people really love dill with citrus and with fish. So dill is a wonderful thing um, that you could add at this point. I'm more of a basil girl than a dill girl, so I definitely always gravitate towards basil. But dill or dried or fresh would be a great addition to this sauce. And add the fresh herbs right into my bowl with the yogurt. Perfect. I'm gonna grab one last lime. Give that a nice roll so I can get all the juices out. And we're going to give this a squeeze here. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the part with the most flavor. Lime juice is really yummy, but did you know most of the flavor and the punchiness of citrus actually lives in the skin? So I'm going to grab a fourth lime, even though I said I was grabbing my last one. And uh, I'm going to give this a nice zest. So I have this cheese grater here. It has four different sides. I like this tiny, tiny little small one here to use for zest. But you might have a zester at home that looks like this. This one has bigger teeth. Um, and I don't want that big of pieces today. So I'm going to use this one. But you can use whichever one you, whichever one you have at home. And if you don't have a zester at home, you can actually just take a, like a potato peeler and peel a little piece off and you can um, chop that up. Turn, 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 because you don't want to get any of the white part because all of the flavor lives in the color. So you see, I've just taken the color slightly off. Look at that beautiful lime zest that I'm going to put into my yogurt. All right, grab my spoon. Give this a nice stir. My sauce is nice and ready. But you know what? Two of these pieces and this salad is for dinner for later for myself and my husband. But there's an extra piece there because I can't not not try it. Got some beautiful salmon, a little bit of arugula salad with the blueberries and a nice little dollop of my coconut yogurt sauce right on the side there, right on my salmon. And another lovely squeeze of lime. 
As mentioned earlier, I use salmon. You can use whatever protein that you desire, but I love to use salmon now that I like it because of all of the benefits that it gives me. It not only helps me uh, feel great and have lots of omega-6s in my diet, which is something that we all really need, it also really, really helps keep your skin nice and your hair nice and your nails nice. It's full of collagen and a lot of other ingredients that really support that. I love to actually feed it to my cats. If you have pets at home and you're making yourself salmon, cook an extra piece and feed it to one of your pets and uh, it really helps with, with their skin and their coat. Look at that flake. The salmon is flaking so nicely. I'll get a little bit of the arugula here, maybe a blueberry and a nice little bite of salmon. Mmm, that's delicious. And so simple. See you next time.